This is lesson 9.1b is in boy in trigonometry on exponential functions and log logarithmic functions. We're in example 3. And they're asking us to graph. And we've got f of x equals negative 2 of x. Okay, so the key thing I want you to do here is see this negative 2. When we have a negative in front of our a, because remember the... Uh, exponential function is a to the x power. All right, when a is negative, we have that negative sign right there. Um, the graph is reflected across the x-axis. You, know, you don't have to know that because when you graph it, it'll automatically do that. But um, that's what that negative sign will do. Okay, The uh, domain is the same, negative infinity, positive infinity, and the range is the same, negative infinity and zero. Oh, I'm sorry, the range is different because now, all of a sudden, the graph that we normally would have that would look like that now looks like that because this negative 2 reflects it across the x-axis there. Okay, so that's what that negative does. All right, let's continue on with what continues to happen um, when the uh, function has a few quirks in it. Let's say that we have an f of x, and let's make it the 2 positive again so it looks similar to this one. But let's say that we add a number to our x value. Okay, when we add a number to our x value, um, this tells me that my graph right here is going to move three units to the left. So instead of this point here uh, being at uh, 0, 1, where it crosses there at 0, 1, it's going to shift over 3 and be at negative 3, 1. It shifted over 3 units. Alright, so um, that's what that plus 3 does, is it shifts it to the left 3. Now if that were a negative 3, it would shift it to the right 3. Okay? Alright, let's see what else we can come up with. Okay, so I cleared the screen. Let's see, here is our original function. When we put a negative here, it reflects that function here. You just draw this function reflected across the x-axis. When we add a number to our 2 of x, we add a number to the exponent, it shifts the graph to the left 3, or this many. And if this were a negative, it shifts it to the right that many. Okay, so let's look at one more. If we have f of x, and we say we're going to take our 2x, and we're going to add... 3 to the entire number, not just to the x like we did up here. What happens? It translates our graph up 3 units. So here's our graph, our original graph, and this 3 means that it shifts it from 1 up 3 units. So, whoops, did I shift it 4 units? Um, 1, 2, 3, 3 units. It shifts it up, so it goes like that, which means our x, um, our horizontal asymptote, moved up 3. Okay, That's the key thing, is where our y-intercept went and where our horizontal asymptote went. They all shifted up 3. Now, Okay, so at this point, we're going to start working on solving um, equations, um, exponential equations. So we're going to start out with example 4 where we have 1 third and we're putting that to the x power and that's going to equal 81. Alright, so we're trying to solve for x, but that doggone x is in the um, exponent position. Alright, the only way we can do this is we have to get a common base because if we get a common base then I can compare my exponents and make them equal to each other. So that's what I'm trying to do here. 
So I am going to rewrite one third as three to the negative one. You see what I did there? I moved it, I took this three and moved it from where it's supposed to be to where I wanted it. So I moved it from the denominator to the numerator and when I did it moved it to the wrong position. And when you move it to the wrong position it has to be a negative telling you where it should be. The negative means that it's in the wrong place. It's not supposed to be in the numerator, it's supposed to be in the denominator. But I can put it there as long as I say yes I know it's in the wrong place. 2 to the x power equals 81. Okay so what good did that do me? Well what it did is it allowed me to write 81 with a base of 3 and an exponent of 4. And now both of these have the same base. And that's what has to be true in order for me to solve for x in an exponent position. So I'm going to use the power rule and multiply those. Okay? And I get that. And that means that if the bases are the same, the exponents are the same. Okay, so I have negative x equals 4. And if you remember from Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or one of those algebras, if we know, if this is negative, we can change it by, to positive by changing the sign of everything in the entire equation. In this case, there's not really much to change. So, x equals negative 4. So the solution set is negative 4. So what I'm saying is that 1 third to the negative 4 power equals 81. Okay, and again, the negative means that my 1 third is in the wrong place, so I'll put it in the right place. And if I take 3 to the 4th power, I get 81, so I did it correctly. Okay, so you just see what happened there. In order to solve for the variable that's in the exponent position, I have to make both base numbers the same so that I can do that. All right, so let's just try one more here in this video, and then we'll go to the next one. So let's look at example number 5. 2 to the x plus 4 equals 8 to the x plus minus 6. So I don't care what those exponents are. I need to change the bases. So I'm going to leave this. I don't know if this is the way the book's doing it or not. Okay. So I changed the 2 to a cube, 2 cubed, or the 8 to a 2 cubed. So 2 to the x plus 4 equals, and again, product rule, so I'm going to multiply. and then I don't care about these anymore. x plus 4 has to equal 3x minus 18. Because if my bases are both 2, then whatever my exponents are, if this is equal, my exponents have to be equal. I can't say 2 to the third equals 2 to the fourth. This is going to have to equal 2 to the third as well, or they won't be equal. So that's why I compare my exponents. Now I just solve for x, and I find out that x equals 11. Okay, So that means 2 to the 11 plus 4, my original problem clear up here, is going to be equal to 8 to the 11 minus 6. So let's see what happens here. 2 to the 15th equals 8 to the 11 minus 6 is 5. Well. 8 can be written as 2 cubed, and that equals 2 to the 15th, which is the same as what I have here. So that's just kind of a check that I did in order to solve that. Okay, next video will be an example 6.